Okay, and this is where we left in our previous movie. And now you can see that we have the same scene. We have our grid, the object that we just create, this box. And uh, what we need to do, uh, right now if we go to inside our Autodoff network, you can see that we have only our grid. Well, what I want to do is just take this cube and I'm going to create a little, uh, 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 some kind of animation right here. I'm going to select this and uh, here in the translate option I'm going to create a keyframe right here in the X area and actually after, I don't know, 44, yeah, one, one sec, let's make it 48 frames. Here I'm going to set that to something like like this, all right? And create another frame. Now what I can do now is just go here into my rigid bodies and I can select my object and make it um, an static object. Let's rewind and play. And that's what we have, okay? Let's go inside our Autodop network. Now you can see that we have our box object right here. We don't need this merge node right now. And uh, we have our merge and that's everything we have right now. So rewind and play. You can see we have a simple animation where our cube is moving and we have our cloud object uh, acting uh, pretty good. So what I want to do is take my pin constraint, this one right here, and here you have a goal object. Well, what I can do is just go and click right here and I can select wh uh, what is going to be my goal object. Right now you are using world space position, okay, and that means that we are using this goal location. But what I can do is just go here and select box object, and now you can see that we have another option available right here called goal points. Well, let's, uh, let's see this one later. I'm going to rewind this and play, and now you can see that something is going on. Okay, we have this kind of uh, animation now. Well, I'm going to stop right here, and you can see that we are having a relationship between our object, our cloud object, and this other guy. Okay, and that is a cool thing, and a great thing, because you can, you, you can see the power of this kind of simulation. Now, you can see that we have a lot of issues right here. Well, the first thing is that we have two different points, and these points are getting uh, attached to this specific region where we have our goal location. So, if we, for example, set this to zero, our goal location is going to change. We rewind and place, and play this. You can see that how now you can see that the effect of uh, why we need to move and tweak this goal location. All right. So stop, rewind, and what we can do is uh, remove one of these points. I'm going to remove the point number 90 and I'm just going to leave one point, one single point. Rewind and play. And there we go. Now you can see my goal point is uh, in the center of my object and that's why we have this kind of animation. Well, I don't want that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to type here mm, minus 5, I think, and right here uh, my minus 5 also and that way we are going to move our goal location into that specific area where we have our point so if I rewind this and play now you can see that we have a nicer and smooth kind of animation because this point is closer to our object and I don't need to pull or push uh, my object to the center and then pull it all right with this other object now I hope you can you can see now why it's important to uh, the option of manipulation of uh, the option of manipulation of our goal object, our goal location. Now you can see how in 3D space you can manipulate this kind of uh, this handle, and that will allow you to create different kind of uh, placements of where are you going to pull or push or move your your cloud object. Now, right now we are using our goal object box object number one. Now let me go back here and turn on my points. And you can see that we have uh, point, uh, our points here in our cube and, or box and the points here in our grid. And right now, if we scroll, uh, scroll through our, into our timeline, you can see how we're pulling. But the relationship between our cloud object and our box is, um, they are not, uh, I mean, this cloud is not entirely attached to our object, right? If I want to do that, what I can do is, move this point, this handle a little bit and place it in any kind of uh, wherever I want and that way I'm going to pull this uh, uh, I'm going to 
create this kind of simulation but you can see how it is reacting in a weird kind of way we are not uh, having even uh, our animation is not playing the way we we were expecting okay well we have a lot of uh, we have, we, that's why we have a, another option right here and what I'm going to do is just uh, set that to minus 5 again and uh, you can see the number of points and here we have the gold points now instead of moving my handle okay in order to place this handle my gold location into that specific area what I can do is just take a point from my cube object and attach that point to our grid for example I'm going to set I want to attach the point number 5 of my box object to the point number 0 of this grid so all I have to do is just place here the number 0 press enter rewind and play and there you go you can see how we are getting this kind of relationship now between our club object and this uh, this box this cube object and now the 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 grid is actually attached into our object so that way you can create for example a cape for a, for one superhero kind of thing and you can attach these points around his neck or i don't know two two points in over his shoulders or something like that you get the idea okay now obviously what we can do here is just uh, say for example I want to attach point number 0 of my grid and point number 1 of my grid to point number 5 and point number 1 of my cube and we rewind and play and you can see that we have two different uh, points right there okay you can see how we move and these two points are attached into our other object and you can see here the guides of our geometry and how the relationship between our objects is acting so that's uh, a good thing right now and actually that's uh, the, uh, the the overview of what, what we can do with pin constraints and also you can see that we have a lot of tools here in our cloud uh, shelf and I'm going to show you some of these other tools in the next movie I'll see you